Hola, Esther. Hello. Eh, we are, eh, estamos eh, realmente muy felices de poder hablar en directo con la autora del libro How to make a book. Es eh, un suceso editorial que ya conocéis seguramente y que eh, se está distribuyendo eh, en Barcelona y en España y es eh, un manual muy divertido, aparentemente muy sencillo para hacer libros. We are very pleased to have this interview with you, with the wonderful author of this amazing book that is having incredible success in Spain, and we're very pleased to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Es un placer y también tengo que decir que es una grande innovación para nosotros de la asociación ILDE, acrónimo de Ilibride poder eh, hablar no solo a través de las páginas y el papel, que esto ya es más normal para nosotros, pero a través de estos medios tecnológicos increíbles que cruzan el mundo entero. Y esto lo hacemos gracias a, a eh, David Antico Digital Strategy, que está aquí con nosotros y que está permitiendo esta increíble conexión intermundial. Y a Pierre Wharton, que hace traducciones. Elisa says thank you very much for this and that this is an incredible innovation for us because not only are we speaking through pages and paper and words, but we also have this wonderful um, David de Antico which allows with digital strategy strategy that allows us this international connection. It is it is wonderful and and such a, something I would not have believed a long time ago. When I was a child we would you know, think someday there will be TVs that you can talk to your friends, and now we have that. Que hace mucho pensar que esto no sería posible, y ahora que y ahora es posible tener un teléfono con vídeo, que era un sueño del pasado. Eh, Esther, eh, eh, lo decimos así para los que nos están escuchando a través de estos canales hipermodernos, que aquí estamos en la Feria de las Artes del Libro de Barcelona que son uh, unos días que la Asociación ILDE ha organizado eh, en el marco del sexto festival del libro de artista y la pequeña edición eh, para crear un nuevo otro momento de encuentro y eh, diálogo sobre el libro y sus artes. Hay muchos expositores aquí fuera que eh, no te podemos enseñar a través de esta cámara. Eh, hay otros autores que están aquí presentes en la sala con eh, ganas de hablarte. Ahora veremos cómo hacerlo. Hay unos workshops y entre las conferencias será un placer poder hablar un poco de contigo sobre lo que es eh, el tema de este año, eh, que es el libro como único y como múltiplo. Juan, el tema. Um, we're uh, presenting to the, our spectators the fact that uh, this festival is organized by ILDE, which is an acronym for ILIBDIDE, uh, that uh, Elisa is an organization organized uh, by Elisa Pelacani, and that we have, we're here in a civic center, and we have 24, 25 artists in, um, on exhibition outside, which um, we're sorry to say, but we can't show you each artist, but it's a great... Uh, pleasure for us for you to be a part of this uh, festival of the small edition of the artist book and small edition and this year's festival is called one and ten so in other words you have a one-of-a-kind book and then the multiple so it, uh, it's the sixth sixth year we do this festival it's it's very exciting that you have this festival I thought what I would start with if this is a good time for you is um, the back of my book that you know me from shows you a simple diagram of how to make what I call an instant book. Many people have different names for this book. But I thought I would start by making a simple instant book very, very fast, not the way I would work on my serious work. And then um, Dicko Faust, who is the founder of Purgatory Pie Press, is here with me. And he would run downstairs and make color, color copies of it and then we would be able to instantly publish it while we talk about other things. So, is that is that a good thing to do right now? Um, let me translate that. Okay. Quiere empezar haciendo una un libro instantáneo, que es el libro que tiene la contraportada de su libro editorial, y si que te va bien ahora hacer esto, porque su ayudante dijo 
um, lo publicará eh, casi instantáneamente porque él es el, el que lleva la, la editorial Purgatory Pie Press. Es una experiencia increíble que aceptamos. Eh, eh, si quieres, eh, voy a coger unos cuantos de NASA 4 porque lo podamos hacer en directo. That's a great idea. It's a perfect moment. If you want, you can give us a moment to go get some paper and we can do it with you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, or I can start the first one and then make another one when you get your paper. But here, let me show you Dicko. Right. Here's Dicko. The founder of Purgatory Pie Press. Greetings. Este es Dico, el fundador de la imprenta Purgatory Pie. So, uh, should I wait for you to have paper? Uh, go ahead and start. <clears throat> okay. Um, we talked bef a little bit before about the difference between editions and one of a kind. Editions have limitations. <coughs> Let me get some water. Could you make me some tea? Sure. Um, hablamos antes un poco del, del libro que es único y las ediciones. Y las ediciones tienen un límite. With our printing press, the size of our press <coughs> is 14 by 18 inches. Um, this is the size of the paper that fits into our press. So whenever I begin a serious edition, I think, What's the size of the press? Because I know that the pages need to somehow fit into this size. But for this quick edition, I'm going to use a photocopier. So I'm using just very simple business paper for this. If you use a photocopier, the edges do not photocopy well. So it's important to put nothing too close to the edges if you want it to look good from a photocopier. And as I say, I'm going to make a very quick, what, what do you call it, a quick and dirty. It will not be fancy, it will be a mess. But that is how I always begin. Everything creative is by making a mess. So Okay, let me translate this. Hang okay. on, one second. <laughs> um, dice que ella siempre, que va a ser un libro rápido y sucio, que es como una maquetación. Entonces ella es un proceso creativo, es empezar con esto algo rápido para sacar la idea. Y normalmente cuando hace una edición, usa... La prensa que está abajo, que tiene una medida de papel, que es 14 por 17 pulgadas. Entonces siempre piensa en la medida de papel que es posible con cada imprenta. Pero para este ejemplo va a usar una, un papel de fotocopia y que acuer, acuérdense que la fotocopia no llega bien a los límites, entonces hay que poner lo mínimo o menos cuando llegas a los límites del papel. Ok. Ok. So, as I said, this, for people who have the book, this is the first chapter, but it's also on the very back of the book. Simple way to make this. First, I fold my paper in half long. Primero doblas el papel a la mitad en el uh, sentido longitudinal. I'm, I will pull my camera down so I think you can see my hands and my table. Does, does this work for you? A little bit further down. How's okay, that? Great. Great. Bone folder. Plegadora. So, the next fold is this fold. Se dobla la mitad horizontalmente. The next fold is this fold. Otra doblez igual horizontalmente. Then I open everything. Pues se abre todo. And I fold it like a W. Y se dobla como una W o una M. Same folds, but I I changed I reversed some. Then Son los mismos dobleces pero al revés. Along this line from the peak to the valley of the W, I'm going to cut it or tear it. I like to tear. If you tear, you must have a very sharp fold to tear with. Ella lo va a romper. Para romper tienes que tener muy bien hecho el pliegue. Y, y, y rompa, uh, rompes o cortas en la, el pliegue que está en medio de la W del papel. Yes. So it's the W, peak to valley, tear. Then, de montaña al valle.
And here we go. So, simple instant book. Sencillo libro instantáneo. Now, we have paper that we use for cleaning our printing press. It's magazine paper, and then when when we need to take the ink off our rollers, Dicko puts it through the press and the rollers grab it. And it should be thrown away, but I can't throw things away. And I think some of it is very beautiful. So often I'll use this paper when I'm making quick samples and playing with things. So for today, I'll use this paper. And I like to tear. One reason I like to tear is, <laughs> is if, if I'm drawing, I pay too much attention. And if I'm tearing, I can just relax and I lose control of it in a way that's good and creative. Okay, but, I need a pause here. Just a okay. Um, este es papel de re, tipo revista que pasan por la prensa para quitarle la tinta a los rodillos de la mano. Entonces ella, como no es capaz de tirar nada, uh, usa este papel para hacer estas maquetas de cápsulas. Y uh, también le gusta romper papel porque cuando dibuja se gusta demasiado y le gusta demasiado. En cambio aquí es más libre y tiene creatividad más Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so instead of any kind of image, I am just going to only put a piece of torn paper on every page. This will be a mess, but it will be quick and it will be a simple addition. En vez, lo que va a hacer es poner un trozo de papel roto en cada página del libro con cola y que va a ser un desastre, pero es una edición muy simple. We think and it's great. We don't think it's a mess. <laughs> it's it should be a great mess. <laughs> but normally I will edit. But when I do this, I can't edit. I must turn off the editor. And sometimes that is good. Que normalmente ella edita o se censura lo que pone. Y cuando hace esto, apaga el Oh, as I do this, I'm being careful not to go close to the edge because when when it gets photocopied, close to the edge will not work. So here's my new page. And we can talk as I do this if you like because this will take a little time. Entonces, tiene mucho cuidado de no llegar demasiado For this, I am using a glue stick. I do not use this work, but when I'm playing with things and making ideas, I often will use a glue stick because it's quick and easy to make a plan. Que normalmente no usa el, la cola de barra, pero esta vez sí porque es una maqueta y es rápido y así no interrumpe el proceso. Now I have to decide. There's an eye here. This was a fashion magazine. Do I want that eye? I guess I want that eye. I'll keep the eye. Ahora tiene que decidir. Esta era una revista de moda y ahí sale un ojo. Entonces tiene que decidir si quiere el ojo o no. Y ha decidido se queda con el ojo. And if you can watch me gluing, I'm gluing on a piece of scrap paper and I glue out to the edge and then and that's a way to not worry about gluing even so it's a mess but better than it might be wheat paste could be a better choice I almost thought I will cook you some wheat paste while we're on the interview but that would be difficult to move my computer into my kitchen que usa un papel abajo para llegar, de abajo de lo que están colando, para llegar al límite del papel que están colando, aunque después te pongan el papel de abajo. Pero eso y asegura que se puede llegar. What's, nice what's nice about wheat paste is then if a little bit gets out of the edge, when it dries, it's okay. 
with anything else, if a little bit gets out of the edge when it dries, it's not so good. But okay, just a minute, one second. Okay. 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 The front, it needs better front though. Let me fix the front. Esto es la parte, la, la tapa, pero no le gusta, entonces ahora la va a arreglar. Somehow this is one of my very favorite colors, this orange pink kind of color. Este es su color preferido, este naranja rosa. Here. You would love our poster, our festival poster. You'll have to send me one. Okay. Um, so, this is my cover. This is my tap, la tapa. Page one and two. Página una y dos. Page three and four. Tres, cuatro. Page five and six. Cinco, seis. And then I always say put some little thing on the end. Just a little postscript. So here's my little postscript. Entonces pone una postdata al final, en la contraportada, que siempre tiene que llevar más. Okay. So here's the stint book. If I unfold it, I'm going to move the camera now so that I can hold it up. Is this good? Yes. So I unfold it, and here it is. <coughs> Nothing El libro desdoblado. Nothing close to the edge. And I'll put it back together really quickly so you see. So then fold it, push it together, and here it is. Now I'll have Dicko take this down to the photocopier and he'll bring back an addition. Um, if, if later, if we want, we can scan it and I can send you the PDF and then anyone in the world can download it and make the book. So, okay. Dicko, can you take this down? Black and white or color? Color. Color. Okay. But if color doesn't work, black and white is fine. No rush. I'll be talking in the meantime. Whatever. Five, ten. I guess ten. So that was the one, and then we'll make the ten. And I want you to notice my glue stick. Once I was being videotaped, and we did many takes. And so to keep us amused, I covered my glue stick with something more pretty than what was on it. So you can always improve your glue stick by wrapping it and gluing something on if you feel that that's important. Una vez hice un video con tantas tomas que se aburrió, entonces tapó esta barra de cola con algo más. So now, we're, while we're waiting for that very fast edition, what should we talk about? Would you like me to show you something? ¿De qué queréis hablar mientras está haciendo el ejercicio? ¿Quiere que les enseñe nada? ¿Quiere que les enseñe nada? They want to ask, they want to know how you make the wheat paste. Oh, <coughs> wheat paste. Um, I use flour and water and my microwave. Ella usa harina, agua y el microondas. I take one part flour. Una parte de harina. Unbleached white flour. Uh, uh, I can't say unbleached. In, we don't, unbleached is um, harina no blanqueada. No blanqueada. Sí. Maybe natural. Go ahead. Okay. And six parts water. Una parte de harina a seis partes de agua. Okay. And then I put it in a takeout container, a little plastic container with a lid. Después lo pone en un tupper de comida, de comida takeaway con la tapa. Okay. Uh, I stir that. I, I do not use the lid for the, the cooking. I just have the lid for later. I put it in my microwave and I, if I do a very small amount, just maybe 20 seconds and then stir it and a little bit more time, stir it a little bit more time. When it becomes thick, then it is ready. Okay, entonces pones una parte de harina, una parte de agua y lo mezclas, lo pones en el microondas 20 segundos. 
sin tapa. Lo vuelves a sacar, lo vuelves a mezclar, lo vuelves a poner, tus 20 segundos. Sigues este proceso hasta que te empieza a pesar. Ok. And, um, and then it's hot, so then I wait till it cools down. But I make a small amount, maybe one spoon of flour, six spoons of water. But if you need a lot, you could make it one cup of flour, six cups of water. Ella hace muy pocas cantidades, una cucharada de, una cucharada supera de harina y seis de agua. Y por eso va rápido. Puedes hacer mucho más, pero lo haces ya muy rápido. Ok. And when it's finished, you let it cool before you use it. Then, Hay que enfriarla antes de usarla. Then you would save it in the refrigerator. You, that's why it's the takeout container with the lid. You put the lid on and refrigerate if you need it for another day. Que por eso necesitas la el tupper con tapa porque después lo pones en la nevera para que porque no dura eternamente y lo tienes unos días en la nevera. Wheat paste does not last very long, so you just make a small amount and then in a day or two you would you would throw it away if you did not finish it. Si no lo usas en dos días, lo tiras. Also, when you use wheat paste, you put it on very thin. Cuando usas el engrudo, pones una capa muy, muy fina. Otherwise, it is a big mess and not a good mess. Um, si no, es un desastre inmenso y no un desastre bien. Okay. Okay. I think we have another question. Okay. Eh, Esther, eh, en el libro eh, que eh, estamos esperando de la imprenta y que el nuevo eh, libro que estamos editando en ocasión del festival uh, sobre el libro de artistas y sus artes, este año se llamará One in Ten, el libro único y múltiplo, eh, tú has escrito un texto eh, en, lo cual es, eh, en el cual dices que una vez que eh, has hecho una tarta tienes que comértela también. Yo quería saber eh, a qué tarta te refieres. ¿Es el trabajo del hacedor de libros que es tan duro, que no solo es bueno, pero también que pide tiempo? ¿Es más una forma estadounidense de bromear sobre actividad artística? ¿O te refieres a problemáticas en la fase de realización y producción eh, de una edición que a veces no se pueda repetir? Uh, Esther, for the text you wrote for this year's catalog that um, we will soon have, um, you mentioned something about having your cake and eating it too. They want to know if this is uh, an Americanism. Oh, uh, the term, I think it must be. Or are you talking about the difficulty of editing multiples of books? Oh, uh, oh just one second. Dicko, my hands are blue on them. Could you get me a damp towel? Sure. Um, it's, it's an Americanism, I guess. But the idea is that you have this beautiful cake, and if you would eat it, you would no longer have the cake. If you make an addition, you can have a, you can keep your book as well as it can be sold to collectors and to museums. So it's um, you know anybody who wants to can buy a copy but it's not if you make one book and then one museum wants it like Museum of Modern Art wants your book but then the Whitney Museum cannot have your book or um, the Victorian Albert in London these are museums that collect our work and it's nice if they can all have one piece of our work but we can also still have our own copy of it so that's one thing we love about editions Uh, okay. Additions, though, are very different to make than one of a kind because there's so much planning, and so it's it takes much longer to do an addition than a one of a kind. Especially if you are doing it the way we are, which isn't what I did today for you. It's we do the type all by hand, and we're printing on a very old-fashioned press. So everything takes so much planning and so much time. So it's a very different process than making one of a kind. Okay. All right. Ah, uh, es un americanismo. Que hay un dicho en Estados Unidos que no puedes hacer pastel, el pastel y también comer. Este es el dicho. Pero su, ella lo que dice es que puedes hacer el pastel y comer. En, en otras palabras, que puedes hacer el libro único, pero al hacer dos ediciones, puedes tener las dos cosas. Porque lo puedes tener el museo de, de, de metropolitano 
tener el Falcon, tú puedes tener el Whitney, tú puedes tener el Lucia with Martin Albert y también te quedas sin libro único. Pero la manera de esta manera de hacer ediciones, sobre todo la manera que lo hacen ellos, es muy complicado porque todos son prensas viejas. Entonces tienes que poner las letras, tienes que hacer, hay mucho control y es hecho de una manera artesanal. Pero esto vale la pena, este esfuerzo, porque sí puede estar en estos museos que coleccionan libros. Eh, tenemos eh, una pregunta del público. Eh, recuerdo que nuestro público, la mayoría, son autores de libros eh, o hacedores de libros o gente que quiere hacer libros. Entonces, seguro será un diálogo muy interesante. We have a question from our public who are all uh, bookmakers, and so this is going to be a very interesting dialogue. And I will now go to the question. Yes. Yo le quería decir que el engrudo se pega mucho en las manos. Lo podemos hacer en, en con guantes de goma o es mejor hacerlo con las manos con las manos sin guantes. Victoria. Hi Esther. Um, Victoria is asking whether uh, when you do when you are working with wheat paste, is it better to use gloves to not get everything messy, or is it better to not use gloves? Oh, what I recommend when you're working with paste, wheat paste is not toxic, so you don't need gloves to protect yourself. Um, I do recommend that it's good whenever you're working with any glue to have a, a damp cloth near you so that you can keep your fingers clean. And of course, with wheat paste, you would use a brush. Okay. I prefer with most things that I do, with most books, to do non-adhesive. I like to sew books more than glue them, partly because it's... It, it's more reversible. It's not as much of a mess. Sometimes, often, when I'm doing something like an accordion book where you need to join pieces together, I would use archival double stick tape. That would be a good solution. But for things like collage, wheat paste is excellent. And then wheat paste works for many other things in books, too. It takes a long time to dry, though. And so something like archival double stick tape can be simpler to work with in those situations. Ok. Entonces ella dice que no es tóxico el engrudo, entonces no, hay, no te necesitas los guantes para protegerte, protegerte del engrudo, um, pero lo debería aplicar con pincel. Entonces así mantienes las cosas limpias. Entonces ella lo que le gusta más es los libros cocidos, porque siempre puedes deshacerlo, es reversible. Pero para conectar, por ejemplo, un acordeón, Um, por ejemplo, puedes hacer unir dos trozos de la corrupción, puedes usar el celo de doble cara, que es calidad archivo, 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 porque así no tiene ácido y no te no pondrá amarillo el papel. ¿no? Y, uh, okay. Ya está. Hello, I do not hear you now. Okay, we're we're no. we're finishing the translation of the oh, question. No, that's fine. What I want to say while we're waiting for that is, you, I now have my edition. So while we are talking, I'm going to make the ten books, and Dicko is going to scan the original book. I'll email it to you, and then everybody who wants to can print it and make their own copy. Great. Okay, Yo eh, quería hacer una pregunta que en realidad es una pregunta que no existe, pero eh, tu opinión sobre las diferencias a nivel de proyecto, de cuando pensamos de crear algo que quedará como objeto único y cuando queremos reproducirlo en una edición. Quiero decir, hay una diferencia 
a nivel de proyecto o es una descubierta mientras mismo trabajamos, pero seguro que hay una diferencia de realización cuando construyo algo con mis manos, que sea una única copia, o cuando estoy pensando a los pasos y a los tiempos necesarios para multiplicarlo. Eh. Um, Elisa asks a question if there is a change in your creative process when you are making a book to be a one of a kind piece or when you're making a book knowing that you will uh, edit several several copies. Yes, I think the process is very different. I make limited editions almost exclusively but occasionally something will come up that needs to be one of a kind. Also, when I'm demonstrating, I make one of a kind, but that is not my serious work. Sí, que es completamente diferente. Y ella casi exclusivamente hace libros para ser editados. Ah, pero sí, es, es muy diferente el, la, la, el proceso creativo. Y que cuando hace demostraciones o cuando hay veces hay proyectos o encargos que sí hace un libro único. La mayoría de su trabajo es para que él. Ah, para 300 is what we want. Oh. And how does that creative process change? Well, it's I I think I'm not the person to speak to about the one of a kind because editions is what I do seriously. Although when I make one of a kind, you just saw me playing with the pieces. And I can do anything I want. I can go by my my instinct and just as if it's a painting, as if it's something like that. But most of my serious work is not that kind of thing. I, I prefer the control of making the one of a kind. Sometimes I don't want the control, but there it is. I, I like to be editing. So if I'm making, I, I brought some of the pieces for our current edition that we're doing. And um, this edition started with Dicko. He, he was teaching art history. And um, he was doing some research. Could you hand me that piece, that original thing? This? Yeah. So one night, he was working this. on some research for art history. And he found this image on the web. And he got Can you hold that up higher? You cannot really see anything. Not really. But he, but he got very excited. And um, and then from that, after a long, after many sketches and many things, he made this postcard. Okay, let me translate one sec. Um, ella le, le prefiere el control de hacer um, ediciones y no uh, el libro único. El libro único, ella es más libre para hacer, lo, lo ve más como un cuadro, pintar un cuadro. Pero Dico es profesor de Historia del Arte y el otro día en, la, en Internet encontró esa imagen. Y de esa imagen, aunque no veamos mucho, sacó esta postal. The, what is interesting about this, one of the things that is interesting mathematically, is that the same thing is in red and the same thing is in black when you print the red and you print the black the white negative space is the same design lo interesante de esta postal es que cuando imprimes el, el rojo y después imprimes el negro encima el espacio negativo o sea lo que queda en blanco es la misma forma el mismo diseño que lo que está en rojo y lo que está en negro the origin of this is 11,000 years old. Can you see the top here? It's too shiny. Okay. El origen de esto tiene 11,000 años de edad. It is in northwest Syria. En noroeste de Siria. And it's from, it, it's funny that it's shiny because it's not actually shiny, but I guess there's glare of the light. Um, but it's 9,000 B.C. 9,000 años antes de Cristo. Um, so, this became 
a print as well. I'll take my computer over to try and try and show you the print. Can you see what is on? There's a framed piece on the wall. Can you see that? Podéis ver, podéis ver la la pieza en el marco blanco. Yes. Now I realize the framed one on the wall is one of the other prints in the series, not that. But for these postcards, we made big prints and also postcards. Our postcards are a subscription series. People would subscribe like a magazine, but to get an original work of art every month. Well, not every month. Every time we print one. Sometimes every month, sometimes every six months. I will show you the different cards in the series. So this one... This is the most recent one. La más reciente. Put, can you put it up a little bit higher, please? Sure. There you go. Okay. Okay. Estas son postales que ella las edita y las envía como como una revista. O sea, te llegan mensualmente o cuando las imprime, a veces es cada mes, a veces es cada seis meses. Te suscribes como si fuese una revista. Because of doing that first postcard, that first print, we decided to make a series. Usually we collaborate with other artists, but this time we decided um, to eliminate the middleman. That's what you would call an Americanism. And so instead of working with another artist, Dicko is the artist this time. Ah, esto decidieron hacer esta edición y decidieron en vez de hacían postales antes a través de artistas, pero esta vez quitaron como tú el distribuidor, no, el del medio, y Dicko hizo su propia su propio arte y es el que también la imprime. Um, can is it okay? Esther, esta, esta yes. es la colección de las fotografías que hemos visto con Dico trabajando a la impresión de los postales. O... Are these the, the photographs we saw with Dico working with the postcards? I believe so. Yes. Creo que sí. Um, now, we wanted to make a book that was related to this series. Queríamos hacer un libro que estaba relacionado con esta serie de postales. It's for an exhibit called narration or something about narrative. Es para una exposición que tiene algo que ver con la palabra o con la narrativa, narración. So my idea was we would take a pattern and build it into something. La idea era coger un patrón y construirla a, a, para hacer algo. And that's what Dicko is now printing. He printed this this piece of it yesterday. This was it's what we would call the Americanism hot off the press. Can you lift that up a little higher? Eso es lo que imprimió ayer y hay una cosa que como las últimas noticias son las que están calientes de la imprenta. O sea que eso es lo último que llega, la última palabra es hot off the press. Está, sale directamente caliente de la imprenta. We started by doing little drawings. Empezamos con dibujitos. We took these and photocopied them. Ah, it's a big it's a big mess and cut them up. Hicimos fotocopias y las cortamos. My idea was if we took so we have one that is mostly red and one that is mostly black with these these stars some are red some are black. Can you lift that up a little higher? Hay uno que es mayor mayor parte roja y la otra que es la mayor parte está negra. Then where is Everything is always such a big mess. Where is the original that we cut up with these? That um, early copy. Está buscando el original que se se recortó. This is the yes. No, not not the original of the yeah. I just showed them these. Anyway, <laughs> we cut them into little 
pieces to see how would it build in a nice way. Los cortamos en trozos para ver cómo se podría construir en una manera agradable. Well, this I took out of the envelope. It's okay. Oh, here it is. So I cut them up and I wanted to build it from something very simple to here. I'll, maybe if I adjust this, you can see better. Great, great. Is this good? Yes. So from the simple shape getting bigger and una more forma sencilla que se crece y se pone más complicada This one though is all cut up pieces from the photocopy Estos son trozos recortados de la fotocopia Pieces like this Piezas como esta As we made this it was looking good but it was looking like a quilt like a patchwork quilt. Que estaba muy bien, pero estaba pareciéndose a una a una manta patchwork, a una pobre and patchwork. That wasn't what I wanted. Y no es lo que yo quería. So we we changed especially so we made more diagonals. Entonces hicimos más diagonales. So then to um to photograph it for the exhibit, Dicko made woof of everything on the press. We do proofing before we do the addition. Entonces, para hacerlo, para fotografiarlo, hizo la. Can you lift that up, please? Hizo la prueba en la en la imprenta que se llama proofing, que hace la primera prueba. And one thing we changed when we made the proof is we made the size different than our original size. Y cuando hicimos la prueba la cambiamos, cambiamos el tamaño. I need to fold this one here. So this original is the the pieces are the same size but the paper is a little bit smaller and it seemed larger would be nice. Las piezas tienen el mismo tamaño, pero el papel es un poco más pequeño, si las piezas parecen más grandes. We're using a very, a very nice printmaking paper. It's made by Arsh, and it's called... Reed. Oh, it's made by Reeves. I think Arsh's and Reeves are the same company now, but yeah, it's made by Reeves. It's called Reeves de Lin. And my French is terrible, but it means it has a little bit of linen as well as cotton. Es un papel hecho por Reeves, la compañía Reeves, que tiene uh, algodón y un poco de lino. Se llama Reeves de la. So, um, so this is the proof, and then he's now making the addition, which is this. And this is the red is printed, and now today maybe he will have time to print the black. Este, la prueba era la de antes, esta es la copia final y hoy ha impreso, ha, imp ha imprimido el rojo y igual más tarde hará el negro. So you can see this piece is, well, if you can, if you can see it well, this piece is the same as this piece. Esta pieza es, es igual que esta pieza. One thing that we do, um, so we we pay attention to what is the size of our press. Our press, I, I only know inches, so our press is 14 inches by 18 inches. This is about 14 inches square, right? Nuestra imprenta mide a uh, 14 pulgadas por 18 pulgadas. Entonces, estos son más o menos 14 pulgadas cu en cuadrado. And so we know if it's 14 inches, then we could make, what, what's the size of this page? About four and a half inches? So we could do four, four, and four. So we could do three pages this way, four, four, and four, three pages this way. When we make an accordion book, and I prefer accordions for exhibiting because if you exhibit an accordion book, you can see the whole book. It's not just one page only. Entonces, Stop tiene la, el cuadrado de 14 por 14. Entonces, como el libro tiene, mide 4 y medio por de alto, te, te salen 3 páginas por 3 páginas. 
y ella le y va a hacer un libro acordeón. Y le gusta el libro acordeón porque se puede ver, ver todo el libro al mismo tiempo, sobre todo cuando se expone. Cuando so, es para exponer. We add a place for the hinge so that we can put our book together. You see we have uh, here. It's joined here. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a little bit, what is that? Uh, about a How centimeter. Much? Yeah. A can little you lift bit. that up, please? Yes, but I don't know if it shows. Yes, we can see it. You can see the hinge? Yes. So we add that as we're planning for the press. We add a space for the hinge on the edge of the paper. It's oh, it's on the top? It's here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's along here. We add a little bit extra knowing that later that will be the hinge. We plan aquí, that as part of the beginning. Aquí añaden un centímetro para poder unir las, la, las páginas del acordeón y mide más o menos bueno, mide un centímetro y lo añaden aparte ya está pensado ya está este espacio para bisagra. We have not decided what our cover will be for this book, but we have this little piece of hinge left on the first page and we can attach a cover to that if we want. What we're thinking we might do is put a black cover with a little die cut so that just the black square shows in the beginning and then when you open it then you begin to build it but it would be very quiet in the beginning just the little black square with a die cut but we haven't decided Definitely that that's what we're doing. That that's one thing we'll try when we make the cover. Okay, para hacer la tapa les queda un centímetro de de se tira de como de bisagra para poder añadir la tapa. Y lo que están pensando es hacer una tapa negra con un troquelado en la misma forma que se hizo exacta con la forma esta negra. Entonces la tapa es muy sencilla, muy minimalista y se y muy ella usó la palabra quiet, o sea muy silenciosa. Y al abrir ya empiezas la construcción de la pieza. Pero no está decidido. Um, one thing I would like to do, since we don't have much more time, is show you the books that are perhaps stuck in customs, the books that we sent to you. Que ahora lo que quiere hacer es enseñarnos los libros que deben estar atorados en la aduana y que no han llegado, porque nos queda poco tiempo. Bueno, Esther, que los libros los estamos esperando y que el 23 de abril, que es el Día Internacional del Libro, es San Jordi, en lo cual presentamos todos los libros nuevos que ha llegado a nuestro festival, aún está lejos. Um, the 23rd of April is the World Day for Books. And we still have time from now until the 23rd for them to get out of customs, so we're hoping that they will arrive on time. Yes, we said we probably should have said a gift, printed matter, but instead we said um, art for an exhibition, so that might slow things down. Que igual let, están atorados porque lo catalogó mal, lo puso, los identificó mal como arte para una exposición en vez de libros impresos. So, um, this is one of the books that we have sent. Let me move the white paper here so I can just have that instead of the table. Mm -hmm. There. <laughs> okay. Um, can you see this book? Did I put the? Did I put my camera in the right place? Can A you little see the further down. How's that? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. This book is called Fibonacci Flower by Susan este, Happersett. Esto se, este libro se llama Flor de Fibonacci de Susan Happersett. She is an artist that we collaborate with many times. Es una artista con quien hemos colaborado muchas veces. With the Fibonacci numbers, the flower builds its um, the flower grows. So it has one petal, then two, then three, because one plus two is three. Um, crece la flor con, aumentando los pétalos según los, los números de la serie de Fibonacci. Uno más dos son tres. Tres más dos son cinco. Y sigue creciendo. 
Then next it goes three, oh, oh, this is two, three, five. Then eight, then thirteen. Then twenty one. So then this I think is thirteen, twenty one, thirty four. And then this shows the numbers. Los números. Los números en posición de los pétalos. With our additions, we sign and number. En nuestras ediciones lo firmamos y los numeramos. And then this was we had this very beautiful paper handmade in Canada. Teníamos este papel muy bonito hecho a mano en Canadá. So I did not want to waste any paper. I wanted to use every tiny piece of it. No quería malgastar el papel, quería usar cada trozo de papel. So I decided to double it a certain way and have it fit in here so that it makes a hard cover from a soft cover. Entonces lo, lo hice doble para que se haga una tapa dura de un papel de tapa blanda. And in this book, Dicko is the printer el and the la, typographer. En este libro, Dicko hizo la impresión y la tipografía. All of the type he set by hand from metal type, antique metal type. Él hizo cada, toda la tipografía de una serie antigua de pieza metálica, que no sé el vocabulario, y él lo and same with that, with this piece that I showed you, with this one. These are all little pieces of wood put onto the press. Estos son piecitas de madera puestas en la plancha de, de la... Um, so then what I did for this book is, it was my idea to make this crazy, this crazy structure where it's accordions coming out and doing all kinds of odd things. That was my idea, to make the structure a little bit like a flower itself. I'll try fue and turn. Fue mi idea de hacer la estructura así un poco loca y que parezca un poco flor y que se desdoble de muchas maneras. And Susan Happerset, the artist who worked with us for this one, she does art with math. So she did these drawings, but based on mathematics. Yes, Susan Happerset hace arte con matemáticas, entonces hizo estos dibujos según la, la matemática. And for the addition, she had made her original drawings black on white. Then, Los dibujos originales estaban hechos en blanco, en, en negro sobre blanco. And then we, um, we made photo engravings from the original drawings. Hicieron grabados fotográficos de los dibujos originales. And then those engravings are what we put on the press. Y estas planchas de grabados son los que se ponen en la plancha de tipografía. Um, Susan does also make some one-of-a-kind books where each one is the drawing. También hace libros de, de pieza única que cada uno es, es el dibujo actual. Um, I will show you several other pieces that we sent to you. This, one, varias otras piezas que he mandado. this book is, I think I could probably even say it in Spanish. Um, is six, six in Spanish? Six, yeah. yeah. Six, seis. Uh, seis. How do you say by the? It's seis by seis by seis. Seis por uh, seis por seis. Of course. Okay. Um, this book in inches is six inches by six inches. 
and it has six pages. Este libro mide seis pulgadas por seis pulgadas y tiene seis páginas. This artist is um, Richard Tipping. El artista se llama Richard Tippy. Tipping. Tipping. Yeah. Um, and if you can see his name. Does it, his name, his, is it in the beginning too? It probably is. Bigger. Yeah, let me see. Here. Here is his name. Esther. He, eh, perdóname, eh, yo quedaría aquí encantada de verte enseñar los libros también porque estamos viendo qué importancia tiene también cómo abrimos los libros, cómo lo tratamos, cómo lo vivimos físicamente. Pero eh, no, cre no quiero que sacamos toda la sorpresa de lo que el 23 de abril nuestro público podrá encontrar en la Plaza de los Libros Imaginados eh, para el sexto festival del libro de artista de edición de Barcelona podrán encontrar físicamente estas ediciones, entonces los esperamos en Plaza San Justo, en el barrio gótico. Eh, yo pero tendría una duda, no una duda, una pregunta que quería hacer eh, a Esther Smith antes que tengamos que separarnos momentáneamente porque hay otra charla de aquí a poco. Y Esther, ¿tú piensas que aparte de la conversación que nosotros estamos desarrollando también con el festival, eh, between, eh, tra entre el eh, libro único y la edición. ¿Piensas que efectivamente eh, tenga una utilidad hacer libros, hacer pequeñas ediciones y más copias a la hora de producir algo de artístico de creativo, enterarse de los problemas de construcción, eh, si algo se tiene que cambiar o modificar? Eh, esto creo que es una utilidad también de la práctica de hacer libros en clases, en workshop o en nuestras casas. Esther, um, we would love to sit and see the rest of the books, but um, Elisa wants to save some of the surprise for the 23rd when our, there's big inauguration in the Plaza San Juste. So uh, she wants to um, ask you one last question, which is, um, do you think that by um, making a book in order to make additions uh, improves the design process of bookmakers in general? That is a difficult question. I think, that, I think it depends on who you are as an artist, what you prefer to do, and what you are good at doing. For me, I like to collaborate. I'm interested in words. I'm interested in pictures. Before I made books, I did theatrical design. Um, I, I made costumes and sets and even some lights for theater. That was my way of combining my interest in words and my interest in, in visuals. Books to me satisfy those interests, but I also very much like collaborating with Deco. You can see my style is kind of making things quickly, making things sort of a mess, and then I work with him and I give him this mess and he takes it and does the precision work and does things very beautifully so that they look they look good and then I go on to the next mess and then he does his precision piece of that so we collaborate very well because we have different strengths I think that's something that works very well with what we do but every artist is different in as, as a person, as a personality, as what they are good at. For some people, it would be too boring to do many different copies of the same thing. And for them, it's they prefer to do one. It's just with me and with Dicko both, even as children, we didn't like the idea that if one person had the picture we drew, nobody else could also have that. So for us, it's nice to be able to have our cake but eat it too. Ok. Um, dijo que era una pregunta muy difícil y que depende de uno cómo es como artista. Porque, por ejemplo, ella, en su, eh, ella trabajaba antes de hacer libros, le gusta la idea de, de... Bueno, hace libros porque le gusta la idea de hacer uh, imagen con texto. Um, y antes trabajaba en el teatro y hacía... Um, 
trajes, los, los, los sumí, y, de, y la, las luces y eso. Entonces, era su manera de unir las palabras con lo visual. Y en los libros lo hacen también, pero ella colabora y le gustan las colaboraciones porque a ella le gusta hacer los desastres, como dice ella, pero colabora con Dico, que es el, el hombre de la precisión. Entonces, esta colaboración funciona muy bien. Hay gente que según qué artista se aburre al hacer muchas ediciones y gente que, que es su parte, es más precisa. Y desde chiquitos, desde pequeños, los dos les gustaba el hecho de que si hacías un dibujo, podías dar uno a cada, a muchos amigos y no te quedaba el dibujo con una sola persona. Yo estoy súper de acuerdo con esta última frase, me parece uno de los principios de la reproductibilidad, ¿eh? Um, Elisa is, is completely in agreement with your last sentence and she's a big fan of reproducibility in additions. Uh, now uh, we have a uh, question. Okay, now we have one last question from, from, the, pu from the public. Soy Mercedes Coma, que era ministra. Entonces mi pregunta era, ¿qué piensa ella? Uh, con la, que no es exactamente una incursión, porque de hecho las tabletas de los medios no estaban escritas en este, estaba en este ese barro. Nosotros que como ceramistas nos gusta el libro con papel, pero como ceramistas nos gusta introducir la cerámica en nuestro caso. Se imagino que igual que la cerámica y metal o otros materiales, ¿no? O sea, me gustaría saber qué piensa de este tipo de, 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 de trabajo, ¿no? Que no es exactamente sobre papel únicamente. Y si estoy entendiendo bien, también tiene partes que no se pueden reproducir. Porque cuando hablamos con... Sí, pero no se puede multiplicar en forma tan serial. O sí, pero tiene ya otro, otro valor. La conversación podría ser como hay algunas formas expresivas, que son, por ejemplo, la fotografía, pero también que son la ilustración, en alguna forma, que eh, han provocado este cambio entre el único y el múltiplo. Y dar un valor también de unicidad a una imagen reproducida, mientras hay algunas técnicas como cerámica o metales que muchos son eh, doneadas eh, o se usan para cosas que tengan tu huella, tu, eh, tu emoción, que si no son únicas son una serie. Tenemos eh, la exposición aquí, eh, eh, los libros de Silvia Valls, que es una joyera, eh, y eh, ella decía cuando me ha entregado su libro para el festival, Elisa, he hecho tres, eh, porque más no podía más. Y les digo, pero esta no es una edición, esta es una colección, porque cada uno de ellos tiene la misma inspiración, pero es diferente, porque no puede la mano repetir exactamente, estas son máquinas. No sé si es una conversación demasiado larga, pero ahora... Ok, Mercedes is asking, Mercedes works in ceramics, and she also likes to do books, so I think her question was, what do you think of... Um, one of a kind, the, the discussion of one of a kind in addition, if you're using materials that are not paper, that are not printable in a press. Um, because here that we have, um, she, there, there are ceramic people that like to make books, there's um, jewelry people that have made an edition of three because they just, you know, it's, each is a jewel and they're slightly different each one, so instead of an edition it's more like a collection. What do you think about using uh, materials other than paper? And what about their reproducibility in terms of materials? I, I think, um, oh, can you hear me OK? My computer said it had muted me. Am I OK now? Yes, you're fine. Good. Um, I, I think that for each artist, you need to decide what makes the most sense. As, as I think I mentioned, at one point. I know one person who makes what seems like one of a kind, but every page she does two at the same time. So she'll, she does work with cloth and she'll cut it up and place it and sew it together and then she'll make another one just exactly the same. So in the end she has two. With ceramics, of course, if you think about dishes, those are made with molds and then they're, they're, it's a very big addition if you have many dishes and you could certainly treat books the same way if you would plan it as if you were planning to do if, it's if you were planning to do a set of dishes it, it's an interesting idea that a set of plates Dicko would you grab our Russell right? a set of plates and I, I have a collection of dishes could be as if it's pages of a book why not? 
Also, of course, type can be printed um, into ceramics. You can take type and print it in the same way that you would with paper, but of course differently, not with a press. But many people use rubber stamps or real type in their ceramics. Um, my, my nephew makes beautiful ceramics, and, and I keep meaning to send him some type. So, you know, this is my Russell Wright dishes. And in fact, the type on the back, I don't know that you would be able to see this, but here if you is... Perhaps pull it, if you could pull it away a little further back and up high, then we could see it maybe? Tilt it? The other way? There we go. Okay. Russell Wright. Russell Wright. He and his wife had a very, a very beautiful collaboration of um, making things for households. Um, ha colaborado, este señor ha colaborado con su mujer a hacer um, cosas para casas. Pero estaba diciendo que si piensas, la cerámica se puede hacer con molde. Entonces, un una juego de platos, si haces miles y miles y miles, podrían ser como un libro. Y el, el, el truco sería que cada plato tuviese un texto que siguiera una narrativa y que ella, su sobrino, hace cerámica y, le, y se puede hacer cerámica uh, con letra o con imprenta o con esmalte. Entonces se puede pensar um, el, la cerámica como una serie, como un libro con páginas. I, with my third book, I dedicated to Russell Wright because our dishes had broken, many of our dishes had broken the cabinet fell off the wall and it was I mean it was it was a tragedy but then there are worse tragedies sadly there are much worse tragedies but I dedicated the book to him and this is my book that we have put a plain brown wrapper on the book called book arts book in brides clothing but originally it's the paper bride it has many um, it has many books in it that you can make with groups or with one person but also it has much advice on living happily ever after okay um, este es el libro que um, se llama la novia de papel pero le ha puesto una una cobertura como si fuese un papel de embalar más cotidiano más casual y, y pero dentro tiene la portada elegante y está dedicado a este señor que hizo cerámica porque se le cayó todo el armario de, la, de los platos al suelo y se rompieron todos. Esto está, está dedicado a este señor. Esther, eh, eh, unlikely we have to say eh, goodbye to you. Yes. Eh, por mala suerte, eh, tenemos que saludarla porque no podemos aprovechar de estar en tu casa demasiado y sobre todo eh, tenemos eh, otra conferencia eh, de belleza infinita que nos hablará un poco del tema de la distribución aquí. Nosotros esperamos de ver tu próximo libro que sé que está en el horno y muy pronto como sale de imprenta te enviaremos el nuestro, a lo cual has colaborado como autora, te agradecemos muchísimo. El martes presentaremos tus libros con nosotros en el Festival de Libro de Artista de Barcelona. Gracias Esther. Thank you very much for participating. Um, we uh, hope to see your books in the plaza. We'll present them in the plaza in, um, on the 23rd and... Uh, in the Plaza San Juste, the festival of artist books and small editions, and uh, we're waiting to see your next book. That as we hear, we hear it's in the oven. So we will also have our cake and eat it too. Very good. And I just want to show you one thing. While we were talking, I have made, I have almost made the ten books from that one little book that we made in the beginning, and I have emailed it to your um, to your email. We email a scan, so anyone who wants, they could take this book, print it on their printer, either black and white or color, and then you can make your own instant book that we made just for today. Thank okay. you so much Thank for inviting me. Thank you. So in my terrible Spanish, I would say, adios amigos. Adios. Adios.